The casting process for the 1985 TV series, which became a beloved staple in American households, was a meticulous journey. Producers aimed to assemble a talented cast that could bring to life the Hughes family, complete with warmth, humor, and relatability. For the role of the patriarch, Jason Seaver, a seasoned actor with a knack for comedy, was essential. After a series of auditions, the producers found their man in Alan Thicke, a Canadian actor known for his work in television and as a talk show host. Thicke's charm and wit made him an ideal fit for the role of a psychiatrist turned stay-at-home dad. Casting the role of his wife, Maggie, required an actress with both strength and grace. Joanna Kearns, who had previously worked primarily in film, landed the part. Her ability to balance compassion and assertiveness made her a perfect match for the role of a career-driven mom. The search for the eldest Seaver child, Mike led producers to Kirk Cameron. At the time, Cameron was already an experienced child actor, having appeared in numerous commercials and television shows. His natural talent, and on-screen chemistry with Thick and Kern solidified his role in the series. For the part of Carol, the middle child, the producers sought a sweet and spunky actress. Tracy Gold, who had been acting since the age of four, won the hearts of the casting directors with her effervescent personality and solid acting chops. The youngest Seaver, Ben, was played by Jeremy Miller. After a series of auditions, Miller's comedic timing and endearing vulnerability shone through, making him the perfect choice for the role. As for the Seaver's wisecracking neighbor, Kirk, the producers found their man in Leonardo Semino. His extensive theater background and knack for comedic timing made him an excellent addition to the cast. The chemistry test between the actors proved invaluable in solidifying the cast. The natural rapport between Thick, Kearns, Cameron, Gold, and Miller created a warm and inviting atmosphere that would come to define the series. In the end, the casting of the 1985 TV series proved to be a winning combination. Each actor brought their unique talents and strengths to the table, creating a memorable and enduring show that would captivate audiences for years to come. No more furious than I've been at him a dozen other times before. I mean, he's a kid, Jason. The directors of the 1985 TV series, Growing Pains, brought a unique vision to the story of a suburban family. One director, Penny Marshall, approached the material with a focus on character-driven comedy. Marshall, known for her work on Laverne and Shirley, brought a sense of warmth and humor to the show. She was influenced by her own experiences growing up in the Bronx and aimed to create a relatable and heartfelt portrayal of family life. Another director, Howard Storm, approached the series with a more cinematic style. Storm, who had a background in film, used sweeping camera movements and visually striking compositions to enhance the storytelling. He aimed to create a sense of scale and grandeur, even within the confines of a sitcom. Both directors worked closely with the cast and crew to bring their vision to life. They held regular meetings with the writers to discuss character development and story arcs. They also collaborated with the production design team to create the look and feel of the show's setting. Marshall and Storm also encouraged improvisation and experimentation on set. They believed that this approach would create a more natural and authentic performance from the actors. This collaborative and open-minded approach helped to create a positive and creative working environment. In conclusion, the directors of Growing Pains brought their own unique creative influences and styles to the series. Through their collaboration with the cast and crew, they were able to create a heartfelt and visually striking portrayal of family life. Ghosts. I'm glad you're staying, Grandma. The 1985 TV series, often referred to as Growing Pains, has remained an enduring symbol in the industry. Its ability to balance humor, shock, and sadness in a single episode is just one reason for its lasting appeal. As the story unfolds, we'll reveal many surprising facts about this series. This show has personally inspired me in countless ways. Its heartwarming portrayal of family values and the challenges of growing up resonated with me. I'm sure many of you have similar memories and experiences related to this TV series. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. The show has touched the lives of many, transcending generations and remaining relevant even today. The characters' struggles and triumphs have left a mark on the hearts of viewers, making it a timeless piece of television history. What do you think makes this TV series an everlasting symbol of the industry? Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to this show? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. I'm not cute. <laughs>
just wear your old one, okay? All right, I'll uh, see you guys later. The filming of the 1985 TV series took place in both controlled studio sets and on location. The show's main setting, the Seavers' home, was a fully constructed set built on a stage at Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Set designers paid close attention to every detail, from the family room's cozy fireplace to the kitchen's vintage refrigerator, to create a warm and inviting atmosphere. In addition to the studio sets, exterior scenes were shot on location in the San Fernando Valley, standing in for the show's fictional suburban town. Filming on location presented logistical challenges, such as managing noise pollution, coordinating with local authorities, and dealing with unpredictable weather conditions. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of video assist technology. This allowed the director and producers to review footage immediately after it was shot, enabling them to make quick decisions about reshoots and adjustments. This technology was relatively new at the time and significantly sped up the filmmaking process. Despite these advancements, the production of the show still faced many challenges. The tight shooting schedule often left little time for set changes or multiple takes, requiring the cast and crew to work efficiently and effectively. Additionally, the show's large ensemble cast presented its own set of challenges, as scheduling conflicts and competing storylines had to be carefully managed. In the end, the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew paid off, resulting in a beloved an enduring TV series that continues to resonate with audiences today. Woman who bore you after 18 hours of labor. <laughs> Sorry, I just... The television series, which aired from 1985 to 1992, follows the life of the Seavers, a typical American family. The show centers around the character of Jason Seaver, a psychiatrist who decides to work from home after his wife Maggie returns to her career as a reporter. The series explores the challenges and joys of raising a family, balancing work and personal life, and the growth and development of the Seaver children. The show's cast includes notable actors such as Alan Thicke, who plays Jason Seaver, and Joanna Kearns, who plays Maggie Seaver. The Seaver children are played by Kirk Cameron, Tracy Gold, and Jeremy Miller. The show also features a variety of guest stars throughout its run, including actors such as Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt in their early careers. The series is set in the 1980s and 1990s, providing a glimpse into the fashion, music, and culture of the time. The show's themes and storylines are relatable and resonate with audiences, making it a beloved classic. The series also tackles serious issues such as substance abuse, teen pregnancy, and mental health, offering a nuanced and realistic portrayal of family life. The show's success can be attributed to its talented cast, relatable storylines, and timeless themes, the series has left a lasting impact on television and continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. The show's ability to tackle serious issues while maintaining a light-hearted tone sets it apart and has contributed to its enduring popularity. In conclusion, the television series is a classic example of family-oriented programming. The show's relatable characters, engaging storylines, and exploration of serious issues make it a standout in the world of television. Whether you're a fan of the show or new to it, there's no denying the impact and legacy of this beloved series. Doesn't matter what I say, you guys got your minds all made up. Not all of us. All right, Luke, you just tell me that you didn't take that wine and I'll believe you. The music in the show, whether it's the score or soundtrack, plays a crucial role in setting the emotional tone. For the score, composer John Lennon aimed to create music that felt warm, inviting, and hopeful. He used a mix of synthesizers and orchestral instruments to achieve this sound. In an interview, Lennon stated, I wanted the music to feel like a hug. It's a show about a loving family, and I wanted the score to reflect that. The main title theme, for instance, features a heartwarming piano melody that immediately conveys the show's positive and uplifting nature. As for the soundtrack, music supervisor Maureen Crow carefully selected songs that complemented the narrative and emotional arc of each episode. For instance, in an episode where the characters are dealing with grief, Crow chose the song Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin, a song about a father who realizes too late that he's missed out on his son's life. The song's poignant lyrics resonate with the episode's themes, adding an extra layer of emotional depth. Crow also made sure to include a mix of popular and up-and-coming artists in the soundtrack. This not only made the show feel current, but also helped to attract a wider audience. In one episode, the character Mike Seaver, played by Kirk Cameron, performs a song by a then-unknown band called The Bangles. This was a strategic move by Crow to introduce the band to the show's viewers. 
In addition, the show's music team often worked closely with the showrunners to ensure that the music aligned with the show's narrative. For instance, in an episode where the characters are preparing for a school dance, the music team selected songs that would reflect the characters' tastes and the episode's upbeat mood. Overall, the music in the show is a testament to the power of music and storytelling. It enhances the narrative, underscores the characters' emotions, and adds an extra layer of depth and richness to the show. Before joining the cast of this popular 80s TV series, Alan Thick was best known as a Canadian talk show host. Initially, the production team didn't consider him for the role, but when no other candidate seemed suitable, they decided to audition him. To their surprise, he turned out to be the perfect fit for the part. On the set, Jeremy Miller, who played Ben, admitted in a recent interview that he and Kirk Cameron, who portrayed Mike, often teased Tracy Gold, who played Carol, causing some tension among the cast members. In an interesting turn of events, both the TV series and its rival show Family Ties were represented on NBC's Friday Night Videos. Alan Thicke and Kirk Cameron co-hosted one episode, while Justine Bateman and Michael J. Fox, stars of Family Ties, hosted another. This unique crossover brought together two of the most popular family sitcoms of the 80s. I just, um, want to make sure that I, I got a chance to come out here. Meanwhile, in the 1985 television series, one of the most memorable scenes is when Jason Seaver, played by Alan Thicke, has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his son Mike, played by Kirk Cameron, about the importance of honesty. Director John Tracy comments, I wanted to capture the authenticity of a father-son conversation, so we used a single camera shot to create an intimate atmosphere. The cinematography focuses on the facial expressions of the actors, highlighting the emotional depth of the scene. Thicke recalls, I remember Kirk, and I rehearsing that scene extensively to get the timing and tone just right. We wanted to convey the sense of vulnerability and trust between Jason and Mike. The scene's impact on the audience is palpable, as it showcases the importance of open communication and sets the tone for the show's exploration of family values. Another standout scene is when Carol, played by Tracy Gold, confronts her parents about their overprotectiveness. The direction by Bob Brunner emphasizes the claustrophobic feeling of being trapped using close-ups and tight framing to convey Carol's frustration. Gold notes, I drew from my own experiences as a teenager feeling suffocated by my parents' rules. It was a powerful scene to film, and I think it resonated with many young viewers. The show's ability to tackle real-life issues in a relatable and engaging way is a hallmark of its success. As actor Jeremy Miller, who played Ben Seaver, observes, the show wasn't afraid to tackle tough topics, and that's what made it so beloved by audiences. We were more than just a family sitcom. We were a reflection of the times. You're really in my Isn't she supposed to breathe or, or something? Oh, believe me, honey, I'm breathing. Isn't she supposed to push? In the show, a significant age gap exists between Maggie and her son Michael, which mirrors the real-life situation of the actor playing Michael, Kirk Cameron. Maggie was only 20 when she had Michael, and Cameron's own mother had him at the same age. The character of Jason, played by Alan Thicke, is seen drinking Coors and Coors Light throughout the series. Interestingly, Thicke originally sang radio jingles in Canada advertising Coors. During the 1988-89 season, Kirk Cameron experienced a religious awakening and requested that Julie McCullough's character be written out of the show. She had previously appeared in Playboy magazine. Cameron's girlfriend, Chelsea Noble, was then hired to replace her. Cameron later claimed that the reason for McCullough's departure was simply that it was out of character for Mike Seaver to have a long-term relationship with any woman. The 1985 TV series, often simply referred to as Growing Pains, had a significant cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its relatable characters and realistic portrayal of family life. It followed the misadventures of the Seavers, a typical middle-class American family, as they navigated through everyday challenges. The series struck a chord with viewers, who found solace in seeing their own experiences reflected on screen. The show's influence on pop culture was evident in its catchphrases and memorable characters. For instance, the character Mike Seaver, played by a young Leonardo DiCaprio, became a teen heartthrob and a symbol of teenage rebellion. The series also tackled relevant social and cultural themes, contributing to important discussions of the time. One such theme was the role of women in society. The character Maggie Seaver, played by Joanna Kearns, 
was a working mother who juggled her career as a journalist with raising her three children. This portrayal challenged traditional gender roles and inspired many women to seek a balance between their personal and professional lives. Additionally, the show addressed issues such as adolescent angst, sibling rivalry, and the complexities of family dynamics. By presenting these themes in a humorous and relatable way, the series helped to normalize these experiences and fostered a sense of community among its viewers. In conclusion, the 1985 TV series Growing Pains left an indelible mark on popular culture. Its relatable characters, memorable catchphrases, and thoughtful exploration of social and cultural themes made it a beloved staple of 80s television. The show's impact can still be felt today, as it continues to inspire and entertain new generations of viewers. Yeah, I don't. Before joining the cast of the popular 80s TV show, actors Joanna Kearns and Alan Thicke had dated each other. Interestingly, Tracy Gold and Kirk Cameron, who played siblings on the show, had previously worked together in a TV movie. Andrew Koenig, who played Mike's best friend Richard Milhouse Boner Stabone for four seasons, was the son of Walter Koenig, famous for his role as Chekhov on Star Trek. Sadly, Andrew Koenig took his own life in 2010. His struggle with mental health was known to the cast, as Joanna Kearns later shared in an interview. Kirk Cameron's relationship with Andrew Koenig became strained due to their differing beliefs. Once Cameron became a born-again Christian, he and Koenig, an atheist like Alan Thicke, found it difficult to relate. Their contrasting beliefs created a rift in their friendship. But I needed to talk to you first. Need it? The 1985 TV series, often simply referred to as The Show, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. Many praised the series for its realistic portrayal of family life and the chemistry between the cast members. The show's humor and heartwarming moments also resonated with viewers. In a review for the New York Times, television critic John J. O'Connor described the series as a cheerful, well-crafted situation comedy with a solid cast. He noted that the show sidesteps the excesses of easy caricature and instead offers a refreshingly balanced and appealing look at family life. The series was also a hit with audiences, consistently ranking in the top 20 shows during its run. It was nominated for several awards, including two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series in 1986 and 1987. The show's star, Alan Thicke, received four Golden Globe nominations for his role as Jason Seaver. The accolades and nominations for the show are a testament to the hard work and talent of everyone involved. For the cast and crew, these awards are a recognition of their contributions to the world of television and a mark of the show's impact on audiences. The nominations and wins also serve as a reminder of the show's enduring legacy and its place in the annals of television history. The series' success also opened doors for the cast members, providing them with opportunities to further their careers in the entertainment industry. For example, Alan Thicke went on to host his own talk show and appeared in numerous other television shows and movies. Meanwhile, the show's young stars, including Kirk Cameron and Tracy Gold, became household names and went on to have successful careers in film and television. In short, the critical reception and awards for the 1985 TV series were well-deserved, reflecting the show's quality and impact on audiences. The accolades serve as a testament to the talent and hard work of everyone involved in the show's production and a reminder of its enduring legacy. Explain yourself! Oh, you mean like where I was born, what position I play? In the final seasons of the TV series, two future Hollywood stars joined the cast. Leonardo DiCaprio played Luke Brower, a homeless teenager taken in by the Seavers. This was an example of the Cousin Oliver Syndrome, where a cute kid is added to boost ratings. The show also brought in Brian Bonsall as Andy, another instance of this phenomenon. Unfortunately, these additions failed to improve ratings, and the series was cancelled. Interestingly, DiCaprio, and another co-star from the show, Brad Pitt, would later co-star in the films Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Audition. Despite the show's cancellation, it remains noteworthy for launching the careers of these two prominent actors. The Cousin Oliver Syndrome appeared in many other shows, including The Brady Bunch, Happy Days, All in the Family, and Family Ties, but it never seemed to save them from being canceled. Mike, what you did, you, you lied to me. During the filming of the popular 80s TV series, 
a budding romance blossomed between two of its young stars, Kirk Cameron and Alison Porter, who played Mike Seaver and Lucy Seaver, respectively, found love off-screen. Their relationship added a sweet note to the show's set, with the two often seen sharing laughs and warm moments between takes. The show's family atmosphere extended beyond the cast, with the crew also becoming an integral part of the Growing Pains family. The cameramen, sound technicians, and set designers all contributed to the creation of the Seaver household, a warm and inviting space that resonated with viewers. However, the show's production was not without its challenges. For instance, the iconic Seaver family home set was located on the Warner Brothers lot, which was also home to the set of the hit series Cheers. The constant laughter and cheers from the Cheers set often made it difficult for the Growing Pains cast to hear their cues. Behind the scenes, the show's writers worked tirelessly to create engaging and relatable storylines for the Seaver family. They drew inspiration from their own lives and experiences, weaving a tapestry of stories that touched on various aspects of family life, from the mundane to the profound. One particularly memorable episode, The Boy Who Cried Dad, was inspired by a real-life experience of one of the show's writers. The episode dealt with the sensitive topic of child abuse and was handled with great care and sensitivity, earning praise for its thoughtful and nuanced approach. In addition to its compelling storylines, the show was also known for its talented cast who brought depth and authenticity to their characters. Alan Thicke, who played the wise and caring father, Jason Seaver, was particularly praised for his ability to balance humor and drama, creating a character that was both relatable and inspiring. Despite the show's many successes, it was not without its share of mishaps and missteps. One notable example occurred during the filming of a live episode, when a prop malfunction led to a minor injury on set. Thankfully, the cast and crew handled the situation with grace and professionalism, ensuring that the show went on without a hitch. Through it all, the cast and crew of Growing Pains remained a tight-knit group, bound by their shared experiences and the enduring legacy of the show. To this day, the Seaver family remains a beloved part of television history, a testament to the power of family, love, and laughter. And driving. Carol, we have talked. When Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns were cast for the series, they were both recently divorced. This shared experience brought them closer, helping to develop their on-screen relationship as the Seaver parents. Interestingly, their last name, Seaver, is a nod to former New York Mets teammates Tom Seaver and Jerry Cosman, suggesting that the creators of the show were Mets fans. The series takes place on Long Island, further supporting this theory. In addition, Thicke's real-life son, Robin Thicke, made a brief appearance in a couple of episodes as a classroom boy. These connections and Easter eggs add depth to the show, making it a fun and engaging watch for viewers. They saddled him with enough guilt to cripple him for life. No, no, I'm just... The 1985 TV series, often simply referred to as the show, left an indelible mark on television history. As a pioneer in family-oriented sitcoms, it paved the way for future shows to explore the complexities of family dynamics with humor and heart. The series tackled relevant social issues of the time, making it relatable and impactful for its audience. One notable aspect of the show was its talented cast, including a young Leonardo DiCaprio, who made his television debut. This series served as a stepping stone for many aspiring actors and filmmakers, showcasing the power of television to launch successful careers in the entertainment industry. The show's influence extended beyond its original run, inspiring a string of made-for-TV movies that carried on the beloved character stories. These follow-up films were a testament to the enduring appeal and impact of the series. Moreover, the show's themes of growth, love, and family have resonated with audiences, leading to its continued popularity through syndication and streaming services. Its ability to transcend generations speaks to the timeless nature of its storytelling and the relatability of its characters. In the world of television, the 1985 series has undoubtedly etched its place in the annals of history as a groundbreaking and influential show. Its impact on future filmmaking and the countless lives it has touched serve as a lasting legacy that continues to inspire and entertain. They went, but Mike said something about knuckles dragging. Oh, Brooklyn. <laughs> In the world of 80s television, Tracy Gold made a significant impact on the small screen. Initially cast in Give Me a Break, but replaced by Lara Jill Miller, Gold found her footing in the industry. She later joined the cast of the popular series, replacing Elizabeth Ward, who she had worked with in The Hand Me Down Kid. 
Interestingly, despite playing the younger sister of Kirk Cameron's character, Tracy Gold was actually older than him in real life. Meanwhile, Alan Thicke, best known for his role as Dr. Jason Seaver on the show, had a long and varied career in television. Working as a writer, personality, host, and composer, he contributed to a wide range of programming from sitcoms and variety shows to game shows and commercials. Thicke's versatility and enduring presence in the industry left a lasting mark on the television landscape. Dream. <laughs> In the 1980s television series, an interesting connection formed between Tracy Gold and her future husband, Robbie Marshall. They were introduced by Gold's co-star, Joanna Kearns. The actor who played Kearns' father, Gordon Jump, was surprisingly close in age to his on-screen daughter and grandchildren. Jump was only 20 years older than Kearns and less than 40 years older than Gold, and Kirk Cameron, who played her siblings, the show's depiction of a doctor father with a home office and a working mother led to comparisons with The Cosby Show. The creator, Neil Marlins, has stated that the occupations and dynamics of the parents were based on his own upbringing, but viewers and critics saw similarities between the two shows. In an odd turn of events, the family attended a live taping of The Cosby Show in one episode, even though the two shows aired on different networks. This detail added to the speculation about the similarities between the two popular series. Swedish meatballs are... <laughs> the gifts are wrong. In the 1985 television series, two main characters, Mike and Carol, were borrowed from the iconic ABC family sitcom, The Brady Bunch. The character Mike is an inversion of the Alex character on Family Ties and a nod to Michael J. Fox. However, the show faced controversy when Kirk Cameron, who played Mike, became so intent on keeping the show devoid of adult themes that he accused producers Dan Gunselman, Steve Marshall, and Michael Sullivan of being pornographers, leading to their resignation. The series also caught the attention of Howard Stern, who publicly criticized it in the 80s, and later chastised Kirk Cameron for becoming religious, even calling him a fake Christian. Despite these controversies, the show remained a popular family sitcom of the time. Evaluated bi-monthly. Remember, these are remedial students that need extra attention, which you, the... In a reunion show, the cast of the popular 80s TV series looked back on their time together. Kirk Cameron, who played the lead role, admitted to becoming a born-again Christian during the show's run, and apologized for his aggressive proselytizing towards his co-stars. Joanna Kearns, who played his on-screen mother, accepted his apology. In one episode, Mike, played by Cameron, confused Russian playwright Chekhov with Chekhov from Star Trek. Unaware that the actor who played Chekhov, Walter Koenig, was the father of Andrew Koenig, who played Mike's best friend Boner. Julie McCullough, who played Mike's girlfriend, was fired from the show without prior notice. She found it challenging to return for a follow-up episode, given her resentment towards Cameron for her firing. However, Cameron and the producers denied that she was fired. <laughs> You guys notice something? Rich people go to the bachelor groups. In the 1985 television series, Christopher Pettiot auditioned for the role of Luke Brower. Interestingly, even though Mike, the oldest of the Seaver children, was portrayed by Kirk Cameron, Cameron was more than a year younger than Tracy Gold, who played his younger sister Carol. This age discrepancy was never addressed within the show. Additionally, the series faced some friendly rivalry from NBC which poked fun at the show in an episode of Golden Girls titled Family Affair. Dorothy, one of the main characters, expressed her disbelief that Alan Thicke, the actor who played Jason Seaver, had a hit series. Despite this jab, the 1985 television series remained popular among viewers. I never agreed to Irma. I, I agreed to Sophie. <laughs> Sophie? Hey, hey, how do you feel about... In the second season of the TV series, an episode titled Fast Times at Dewey High underwent editing on the Disney Channel and ABC Family. The original episode featured the song Bad Attitude by Honeymoon Suites, but it was removed due to financial reasons on Disney's end and time constraints on ABC Families. Interestingly, in a later season, Ben is seen with a Honeymoon Suite record in his room, and the show's host, Alan Thicke, had even featured the band on his show Thick of the Night and was a fan of theirs. Actress Heather Graham made a brief appearance in one episode of the series. She played one of the three girls that Mike took to the Winter's Ball. Graham's character only spoke one line, hello. Maura Tierney, another actress who appeared in the show, admitted to being fired. 
Unfortunately, the circumstances surrounding her departure are not publicly known. From now on, this will be our driveway. In the television series, the character Jason Seaver was highly regarded, ranking 37th in TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest TV dads of all time. The Seaver family included a son, Ben, whose middle names, Hubert Horatio Humphrey, paid tribute to the famous senator from Minnesota. The series also featured notable guest appearances. For instance, both Matthew Perry and Brad Pitt appeared as boyfriends to different characters. Later, they both starred in the sitcom Friends, with Perry as one of the main characters, Chandler Bing and Pitt as a man from Rachel's past, Will Colbert. The latter character was part of an elaborate and joke, as Pitt and Aniston, who played Rachel, were married at the time. Interestingly, the show also featured Julia Roberts, who, like Pitt, played a former classmate planning a revenge scheme on Chandler. This storyline was reminiscent of the one with Pitt, further showcasing the interconnectedness of the television world. You and me around. Oh, that's frightening. <laughs> that's the idea. In the second season of the popular 80s TV series, the video portion of the theme underwent a change, showcasing clips from the previous season. Meanwhile, the competition for the role of Jason Seaver was fierce, with Bruce Willis vying for the part. Ultimately, Willis landed the role in Moonlighting, and the Seaver part went to Thick, who became a significant part of the show's success. As the series progressed, the theme song's video portion continued to evolve. Real-life photos of the cast as children were featured in the third season, with Thick always standing alone at the end, running to catch up with the other cast members. Seasons 4 and 5 showcased a different cast member lingering in front of the camera before running to join the others. The final two seasons featured a professional family photo before and after the credits. Unfortunately, Tracy Gold, who played Carol, suffered from severe anorexia and missed most of the show's final season. In the final episode, viewers may notice that she does not take a bite of the pizza she is holding, a subtle indication of the challenges she was facing at the time. Despite these challenges, the show remained a beloved part of 80s television, leaving a lasting impact on its audience. In the 1980s television series, a unique bond formed between on-screen siblings Kirk Cameron and Tracy Gold. Before their roles in the show, they had already worked together on several projects. When it came time for Gold to attend her senior prom, Cameron was her chosen escort, further solidifying their real-life friendship. Meanwhile, Cameron met his future wife, Chelsea Noble, on the set of the series. Their relationship blossomed behind the scenes, eventually leading to marriage. The casting process for the show also had its surprises. Elizabeth Ward was initially cast as Carol, but after testing poorly with audiences, producers turned to Gold. Having already auditioned for the role, Gold had moved on. However, producers persisted, and Gold agreed to read for the part once more, ultimately securing the role and becoming a fixture in television history. I, tomorrow night? I mean, I feel so terrible. You flew all the way out here just to see me, and I'm booked. Oh, oh, no, I did Jason Seaver, played by Alan Thicke on the TV series, was recognized as one of the greatest TV dads, ranking number 37 in TV Guide's list. Seaver's on-screen daughter, Carol, portrayed by Tracy Gold, had to be written out of the final season when she took a leave of absence. The character was sent to London to study abroad. During the show's run, Kirk Cameron, who played Mike Seaver, experienced a significant change in his personal life. He became a born-again Christian, which led to conflicts with the show's writers. Cameron refused to do certain parts of the scripts due to his religious beliefs. However, he was open to working around or editing the content he found offensive. Before becoming on-screen siblings in the popular 80s TV series, Kirk Cameron and Tracy Gold first shared the screen in a McDonald's commercial. Cameron, who played the role of Mike Seaver, found a mentor and friend in his co-star Alan Thicke, who played the family patriarch, Jason Seaver. Thicke's influence was so significant that Cameron became a pallbearer at his funeral. The show also featured Jamie Abbott, who played Ben's best friend, Stinky Sullivan. Interestingly, Abbott's first appearance on the show was as a bully who picked on Ben. The transformation of his character from a bully to a friend added an intriguing layer to the series narrative. You're saying all Carol's hard work got her nowhere. No, I'm not. Carol's hard work got her into Columbia University. In the 1985 television series, a notable guest appearance was made by Christy Swanson, who played Rhonda in Thank God It's Friday, 
and was also the girlfriend of Alan Thick at the time. Swanson's character infamously offered Mike cocaine at a party they crashed. The show also featured familiar faces within the cast. Candace Cameron Beer, Kirk Cameron's sister, made appearances in a couple of episodes as one of Ben's classmates. After the series ended in 1992, the cast reunited in 2016 at Alan Thicke's memorial service. Attendees included Kirk Cameron, Tracy Gold, Jeremy Miller, Joanna Kearns, and even Leonardo DiCaprio, who had not been in contact with most of the cast since the show's cancellation. This memorable gathering highlighted the lasting impact of the series and the bond shared by its cast members. Mom, you can't ground me this weekend. Oh, yes, I can. You After her time on the popular family sitcom, Joanna Kearns, who played Carol Seaver, transitioned to a successful career as a Hollywood director. She once shared with friends that she felt she had to give up acting to be taken seriously in the directing world. A sentiment her friend Jobeth Williams, known for her role in the Poltergeist franchise, echoed. Despite the challenges, Williams also became a director. The Seavers, the family at the center of the show, resided on Long Island in New York and frequently traveled to New York City in various episodes. In one particular episode, Mike and Boner went to spy on Coach Lubbock after he was fired and made their way to his apartment near JFK Airport. Interestingly, ABC seemed to have a pattern of naming the female lead in their family sitcoms Carol. This trend included Carol Brady from The Brady Bunch, Carol Seaver from the series in question, and Carol Foster Lambert from Step by Step. These shows all revolved around step families, with the Seavers and Lamberts having foster children, and the Bradys having stepchildren. Not there. <laughs> okay, stupid question. Okay. In the third season of the popular 80s TV series, Tracy Gold's character, Carol Seaver, was written to study in London. This was actually a cover-up for Gold's real-life battle with anorexia nervosa, which led to her suspension from the show. During the filming of the show, Kirk Cameron met his future wife, Chelsea Noble, on the set of another TV series. Recognizing her talent, he later arranged for her to join the cast of the series they were both working on. Years after the show's original run, Cameron made headlines when he apologized to his co-stars for pushing his fundamentalist beliefs on them during their time together on the series. This act of contrition demonstrated his growth and maturity since their time on the show. You eat dinner there too? Yeah, but only after I eat dinner here first. <laughs> hey, it's their way of thanking me for doing In the show, the character of Chrissy underwent a significant change in 1990 when the producers decided to leap her age to five years, making her suddenly seven years old. This sudden change was a creative decision made by the producers. The series was known for its talented cast, including Jeremy Miller, who played Ben Seaver. Miller openly admitted that not all cast members got along, specifically mentioning that Kirk Cameron, and Leonardo DiCaprio had a strained relationship on set. The theme song of the series also underwent changes throughout its run. Initially sung by B.J. Thomas, it was later turned into a duet with Dusty Springfield. Following the success of the Dirty Dancing soundtrack, Jennifer Warnes' version replaced Springfield's. The final season featured an a cappella version, and a single episode even had the theme song sung Broadway style by Mike and his fellow singing waiters, these changes in the theme song added variety and interest to the series. <laughs> What's it? Did the show leave a lasting impression on you? For many, this 80s TV series not only provided laughter and entertainment but also resonated on a personal level. The film tackled relatable issues and showcased a loving family, making it easy for viewers to connect. It's amazing how this series from decades ago still sparks conversations and memories. We'd love to hear about your experiences. How did this TV series impact you personally or influence your perspective on cinema? Share your stories with us. Perhaps you found solace in the characters' struggles or laughed along with their antics. Maybe this series even inspired you to explore different genres of film. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's keep the conversation going and celebrate the enduring charm of the film. Come on, Mike. I didn't want to spend the weekend with nerds on ice, so I invited the biggest party animals in school. Then how am I supposed to...